When I was learning to code, I spent a lot of time learning SQL and using it to work with data in the projects I was working on. But then I started using frameworks like Ruby on Rails and was introduced to these things called ORMs. An ORM is probably one of the best tools for saving you time and effort when building a full stack app as they can help speed up your development time, making it easier to work with data in your apps. And they're also a handy thing to add to your professional skills on your resume or CV. But what exactly is an ORM? Well, put simply, an ORM provides a way of interacting with a database, like retrieving data from it or putting data into it without having to write any database specific code, and by that I mean SQL. This creates a sort of bridge, an intermediary step between where your data is stored and how it is used in your application code, and there is a mapping between the ORM code you use in your app and the tables in your database. So, to explain this further, ORM, in web development terms, stands for Object Relational Mapper, or mappings, and it converts the tables in your database into objects that you can use in your code. For example, if you wanted to get all of the posts that are stored in your database for a blog application, you might normally write an SQL query that looks a bit like this. This SQL string would need to be passed from your app code to the database using some sort of connector package like a Postgres connector or MySQL connector. So here's how that might look when connecting to a Postgres database in JavaScript to retrieve those blog posts. In this code, we're connecting to the database and then sending the SQL query using the client's query function. This is quite a simple example, but you should see straight away that there's lots of opportunities to introduce errors when using a raw SQL statement like this. And with an ORM, to do the same thing and get the post in our database, you would use functions provided by the ORM to access the data. Here's a bit of an overview of what that might look like with an ORM package instead of using a database connector. This isn't a real package, it's just example code. So it's very similar to the Postgres example, except we don't need to have any knowledge of how the tables are structured in the database, and we don't need to write any SQL to retrieve the data. The ORM does all of this for us. This ultimately helps to simplify the interaction with the database as the ORM does all the heavy lifting of creating the right query to work with the data. But how does the ORM know where to put the data and where to retrieve it from? This is all done by creating a data model which defines how the data is structured in the objects we use in our app. The ORM then hides the underlying structure of the tables in the database from us by providing the mapping between object and table. In other words, they will handle the creation of the tables in the database for us and modify this automatically if we need to make any changes. Let's have a look at how ORMs use data models. The idea of creating a data model isn't something specific to ORMs themselves, but they're used here to define how the data should look within your application and the ORM works out what tables need to be created and how to map between the database and the objects in your code. Here's an example of what a model might look like in a JavaScript ORM. Here, we're just defining a blueprint, a structure for our model, which we can then use to create new posts, which we can work with in our application code and then store in our database. Referring back to our previous example of retrieving our blog posts, we might use a data model to get all of our stored posts. In a simple express app, this might look a little bit like this. Here, we're using the blog post data model to tell the ORM which type of data we want to retrieve. It then works out where that data is stored in the database and passes us back the results as objects that match the blog post model. Another example of using data models with an ORM is storing data. We might have a root in our Express app which is called from the front-end web app to create and save a new blog post. With our ORM and blog post date model, that might look something like this. So here, we're taking the request body provided from the front-end, creating a new instance of our blog post model, and then using our ORM to save the resource into the database. Hopefully you can see again how this is much simpler than writing an SQL statement to take all those bits of information provided from the front-end app and ensure everything gets stored in the right places in the database. This is especially true when you have multiple tables and relationships between those tables. Of course, the R in ORM stands for relational or relationships, and your chosen ORM will handle splitting up an object provided by your application code into the related tables, and also joining data back together when you're retrieving it. 
To carry on our blog post example, it's likely that you'll have users or authors who are writing the blog posts. Rather than adding those directly to a model as a string or something, which would create problems if the user wanted to update their details later on, you can provide a reference to a separate model. In our made up JavaScript ORM, that might look something like this. ORMs usually have better ways of dealing with relationships, but this example hopefully illustrates how you would link models together, and when saving or retrieving data, your ORM will do all of the hard work of making sure that data is saved in or retrieved from the correct tables. So I've given you some made up JavaScript code, but ORMs are available in a wide variety of platforms and languages. Some popular ORMs for Java include Hibernate, OpenJPA, Eclipse Link and Oracle Toplink. For PHP there are packages like Propel and Doctrine, Python has SQL Alchemy and the Django web framework has an ORM built into it too. C Sharp has nHibernate and the Entity Framework, whilst JavaScript or TypeScript has about a billion, including Prisma, Drizzle, SQLize and Type ORM. So what are some of the pros and cons of using an ORM? Well, here are some of the pros that you might want to consider when choosing or thinking about using an ORM. It abstracts which database system you're using from the app code. So as a developer, you don't really need to worry about which system is in place as the ORM handles everything for you. Another advantage of this is that you can easily swap the underlying database system in use for another one and not have to change all of the logic in your code that works with the data. It also creates dry code for you as the data models are all kept in one place, making it easier to update, maintain and reuse code. And of course, lots of stuff is done automatically for you, such as connecting to a database, the authorization, and the interaction with the data. And as a developer, you don't have to write or even know how to write SQL code, and this can mean that there are less errors when working with the data due to badly formatted SQL statements. And one final pro for using an ORM is that you have improved security and integrity of your data, so although an ORM won't completely eliminate these issues, it goes a long way to help by mitigating things like SQL injection and making use of transactions. But it's not all roses, here are some of the cons of using an ORM. So first off, you have to actually learn how to use the ORM, including its syntax, how it approaches using data models and relationships, and depending on your level of experience, this can seem like a headache. The ORM needs to be installed into your project and ensuring you have the correct dependencies and maintaining these packages can add extra complexity and an overhead to your project. And although an ORM simplifies the interaction with your data, it can be a bit of an overhead in terms of processing time, and you will most likely get better performance when using raw SQL. If your app requires high volume processing or needs to have optimal response times from your database, then an ORM might not be the best choice. Finally, and this has happened to me before, when a weird problem comes up with an ORM, you can run into blockers whilst looking for solutions. You're kind of at the mercy of looking through Stack Overflow and GitHub issues to work out why something isn't behaving as you would expect, and if you can't fix it, you're kind of stuck. So if I have convinced you that an ORM is right for your project, then the next thing to do is probably check out some of the popular ORMs for your stack. So take a look at the documentation, see how they define and work with data models and relationships, and see which one looks most natural to you. If you want to get an overview of how to use a TypeScript-based ORM, then you should check out this next tutorial where I'll give you an overview of how to get up and running with an easy-to-use package.